Hello. This is Eduardo. Whiskey 4, Bravo, Tango, Killer. And uh, what I have here today is um, Yezo FT897 that requires a display change. The radio came with uh, an antenna tuner, the AT897 Plus by LDG. And uh, the radio is essentially a donation to the club the Vienna Wireless Society Club in Vienna, Northern Virginia. And I will work on replacing the display, which is uh, at this point not working properly. So in order to um, start working on the radio, this unit needs to be removed and um, that way I'm able to properly access the front panel, its sides and everything, so uh, the unit will be removed. And now I will show you how the uh, display looks like when I power the radio on. This is what the display looks like at this time. I will uh, reduce the RF gain to show you the signal bar. And uh, that way, oops, I touched the. Uh, that way, you can better appreciate the condition of the display at this point. We'll open the RF gain again. So, there you have it. Let's get to work. I have removed the antenna tuner from the side of the radio, so now I have full access to the radio all around. And uh, the next step will be opening the top and the bottom and remove the uh, four screws, from two from the top, two from the bottom, to be able to remove the uh, uh, front of the radio. And also uh, work on the removal of uh, certain uh, knobs that need to be uh, removed. We'll continue. These two knobs are removed from the front of the radio. This is what the radio looks like with the bottom removed. You can see that the uh, power supply then is removable. Let me just simply take it out of the radio as it, it is a completely separate module. So now the top is to come off and to do that I'll remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. There's no need to remove these two screws here. Okay, so uh, looks like there is a wire connected here. Let me get my tools to pull it up. Ah, this radio has a Collins filter right here. Okay, and also remove this switch. Um, yeah, there's a switch that goes right there. Uh, you pull out this particular connector here, which is the speaker connector. You can see this is the connector that goes for the speaker. And also um, the uh, connector, which is the uh, switch connector. The front of the radio is now loose but not completely removed because now we need to understand that these wires need to come out. So there is a uh, a series of wires that come in from the front pan to show this wire is connected here with this connector a series of connections this wire is connected here and finally there's one that comes underneath this uh, shielded cable here and it goes down here and let me see if I can show
it goes down there. Okay. So I've already unplugged them. And now I'm ready to pull the front of the radio ever so carefully so that these wires don't get tumbled up with anything. I managed to lose these wires here. I don't know if you can see. And colder here from the front. So let me work on that. I now have the board removed uh, from the front of the radio. And here is the display. The two screws on the back are already removed so the display will come off easily. Um, and this is what it looks like after it's uh, removed from the radio. I uh, removed the encoder uh, from the front. VFO remains on the front of the radio, so there's no removal of VFO. Uh, so let me go ahead and start working on the uh, screen. So this is the new screen. And as I put it here, So, I don't know if it's exactly the same size or not. It, it appears to be. Just carefully put it in here. Uh, you, you might not be able to see this. Okay. This is kind of like how it's going to be. So, I will now remove the um, flat cable. So flux has been applied to the um, flat cable. Now I will be using this soldering station here. So um, this is being cleaned now and I'm working on removing this glue from the top. As a side note, the fans on this radio are amazingly clean. Surprisingly clean. Kudos to the owner. So the uh, new board is in place and it's awaiting now soldering. Yeah, it's in place. I've uh, removed the flat cable from the new one uh, and to do the removal is uh, a very simple process. Now that the, 
the driver is soldered and verified with the multimeter for continuity. Checked all soldering. You actually saw uh, the soldering happens really underneath this this board. So you have to put a little bit of flux first, then put the board on top and uh, perform the soldering and it kind of magically salts from the bottom as well. This last two here I can put a graphic on the screen to show you that they're both ground so if you test continuity and you realize that these two here are in short it's normal because they are purposely on short and they are uh, ground you can test them also with this ground over here on the bottom of the screen so now is the time to adapt the display to the bracket so I strongly recommend to also do a little bit of um, shaving in the back of this plastic I'll show you why because this driver is a little taller than the original so if you don't shave a little bit in the back uh, these brackets here won't engage on the board hence it's 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 going to be off of its original position so as it is right now it's properly positioned and you can see that it's touching the board perfectly well ready to be screwed from the back now I still need to work a little bit more on the side as you can tell I've already worked a little on this side and it's not just the sides but also the height uh, this particular display uh, doesn't doesn't sit in uh, naturally with the original size, so it's a little bit, just millimeters bigger than the original. So we need to shave a little bit uh, on the sides, mostly as the owner and creator of this driver advises, uh, mostly on the left. So that's what I'm going to work on continue work on. Feeding is perfect now. I was able to shave this side a little bit on that top side here and nearly nothing on this side as instructed. Um, so did on this side here and uh, it fits perfectly now. So now I will proceed to test the display and see if it's working properly before I remove the front um, protector. So radio has been reconnected and it appears to be working fine. I am uh, working here the RF gain so you can see the, the signal bar move up and down so I'll start working on closing the radio now so the wires are back in uh, in the routing there um, all the other connections were made VFO uh, squelch uh, gain and um, um, AF control all the screws are back in place um, including the screws for the uh, C1 there for the display so now we're gonna put it back together on the radio process of closing the top of the radio remembering to uh, plug back in the uh, switch AB switch kind of hold it 
the top like that just so that I can properly stick the uh, connector back in. Now I need to put the antenna tuner back in and uh, to access the area where you screw it to the radio you have to make sure that the lead is removed and uh, there are four screws one, two, three and four to go here on the side of the radio and here we have the display collars not sure how many they are some of these collars are very intense So I'll leave it, at it the way it was on one. <clears throat> um, I'm going to send in a signal on 7 megahertz. There you have it, signal 9, and signal 8 actually. There you go. Testing one two, testing one two, testing one two. The radio is not ready. Don't know if you'll be able to see that screen. Oh, 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 one two three testing. One two three testing, one two three testing. One two three testing, one two three testing. Yeah. One two three testing. Okay. There you go. Take care. Bye.